All right, guess who's joining me on RMB now? It's beautiful. Georgia Smith, I've been looking forward to meeting you for so long, and uh, I'm going to accept this FaceTime for now, but I believe uh, you owe me a skydiving date. Skydiving? Is that what we're going to do? I thought we were going to jump out of a plane. We're falling, we're flying, we don't know which way <laughs> which way is up or which way is down. That's why I avoided it. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever done that before, actually? No, one of my friends was like, you actually should. You should do it because falling off line. So maybe. I think I'll be down. I'm quite like, I could be a bit of a daredevil. I could do that. We could do it. Let me tell you, it's terrifying when you jump out of the plane, but you're falling so fast that you can't even scream. And then before you know it, it's over. It's a beautiful experience. (laughs) And I think think we should experience that together, Georgia. But look, I've been enjoying the new album. As you mentioned, it's called Falling or Flying and... You know, Georgia, I've been a fan of yours from afar for such a long time that I would love to rewind a little bit because I remember when I first got introduced to your music a few years ago, this was maybe around 2017. First of all, I just fell in love with your voice. What a beautiful voice. And I remember I couldn't get enough of the music. You were doing some shows here. It feels like, and again, this is what it seemed like here. It happened so quickly where suddenly you were everywhere in the States and it was really amazing. And I always wondered what that experience was like for you. You've been singing for a long time, of course, before I first heard your music. But in those years leading up to your debut album and all the attention that came, all the experiences you had, what was that like for you? Flying. (laughs) Do you know what? Oh, my God. It seems so long ago, but it wasn't even so long ago. Mm -hmm. But everything was just like one thing after the other. I was just going with it, going with everything. I was young. Like, yeah, when I put my album out, okay, you heard me in 2017, so I would have been like 19, Mm -hmm. 18, 19 then. And then, yeah, it was every, everything was just like, I've never experienced anything before. I was just here for the ride and just, yeah, kept going and I'm still here. (laughs) But no, do you know, it just seems so like, I still feel like I'm still at the beginning, mm-hmm. even though that I've done so much already. It still feels like the beginning to me right now. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense. I still feel like you're very early in your career, right? I think you have a lot more great music to give us. I'm glad we have this this album now. Um, but I just, I, I always imagine that that transition from working so hard on your craft for so long and then sort of the world just opening up and embracing all of it must be really exciting, but also a little overwhelming. And I feel like I hear a little bit of that on on the album, you know, on a song like on uh, Greatest Gift, where uh, it took me a while to realize that you were talking to yourself on that song. Or am I, am I still listening incorrectly? No, no, no. I'm talking to myself. I'm talking to myself now and my younger self. Because, like, sometimes I forget to be, like, proud of myself and let myself know you're doing okay, like, chill out, like, you're good. Don't don't worry. And even when you are feeling down, it's okay because there'll be better times. But yeah, greatest gift is kind of about that. And I guess before, when I was younger, even though it could seem overwhelming, I didn't really get like I didn't really get like overwhelmed by stuff. I just let everything happen. But then when I then, as I've gotten a bit older and take more time in to reflect and everything. Maybe now it's become more overwhelming and a bit like, oh my gosh. This, like, yeah. So I guess this album probably, you'd hear that more on this album because I'm actually like deep in everything and realizing how I feel or how I felt. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense when things are moving so fast, you're just getting it done, right? You're enjoying these new things that you're learning. You have to take a step back sometimes to to really reflect. And, you know, what was it like actually writing that song for you? Is that a song that you sat down in the studio and you were able to knock out in in one take? Or were you coming back to that record? So, well, how I usually work, like, I just sing. Whether someone's playing the keys or guitar or there's, like, a beat, I'll just sing. And the mic's always on, so we record everything. And, yeah, that one... I sang and there were certain words. So usually if I'm singing like a freestyle, there'll be certain words that I pick out when I come to write back the song. I actually wrote that one with Maverick Sabre. 
which was really nice writing with him because I've known him since I was 15. Um, so, and he's seen me grow in this, like, and put music out. Um, so he knew a part of the little girl that I was talking about as well because I'm writing about my younger self too. So, yeah, that one, I, I said, like, greatest gift. Like, I don't know, it just, it just made sense what I was writing that song about. So, um, yeah, freestyled it. And then Mav was in the studio and I was like, you want to write with me for this? So then I always wanted Leela on a song. And it's crazy because when she was in London, or she'd come to London, it was her birthday as well, so... She was a gift on the song, and it was her birthday, which is beautiful. And I feel like she just added to, well, she just mm, just made the song, yeah. So your process, it sounds like, um, you know, you said you kind of go where the feeling takes you. Has that changed a lot from recording your very first album and even the EP you gave us a couple years ago? Well, my first album was songs from 16 to 20 there was like two songs when i was talking that i'd written in my 20s so that was a collection of songs that i was like yeah this can be my album right so that was how i did that one so my ep that i put out in 2020 these are songs that some of them like there's a song on there burn i really wanted that as an album song but i really wanted to put something out and i felt that was a good time to put that song out too so that those songs were still songs that maybe I'd had for a few years before I'd put them out. And then with this album, it was from scratch. Bar the songs that I had, but they weren't written, so it was still from scratch, really. So, yeah, and I learned so much from this process. Like, when I do my third album, but I'm sure after my third album, I will also say, when I do my fourth album, I'll just do it differently. <laughs> but with this... Um, and uh, what I take from this one is to can carry on being spontaneous because me and Dame Dame, I'd just be like, yo, what are you saying? Like, oh, can I come to the studio or want to come round? Let's get some food. Everything was really spontaneous and it wasn't so, we've got to finish an album. Because when you start putting deadlines in, which I know you do because people have to put things in place. Let the other people put the deadlines. Not yeah. <laughs> but I think, I, I think next time I'll know not to think I'll be finished at a certain time. Just let me finish the music I'll finish the music then be like okay guys my album's done now let's figure out next steps um but I wouldn't know that if I didn't do this exactly it's so, all it's part of the learning process yeah but I loved like a yeah I can't believe I finished it you finished it and it's great and I love that um you know the tempo changes as you go through the album but it still feels cohesive right you know there's some more up-tempo records some more some vibey UK funk. Even I think it's on Go, Go, Go. There's a bit more guitar. It sounds a little rock tinge. And then we slow down again as we get later in the project. So well, you were freestyling some of those records just when you felt like you were in the moment. In terms of pairing it up with the right production, how did how did that process go? Like, what did you want the album to sound and feel like? So um, I've never really had like... I want it to sound like this, it needs to be like this. It just, just go with how it feels. So I knew I wanted to work with Dame Dame because, so I heard their, my friends, so, so I've got a group of friends and I knew one of them of Dame Dame when I was 15, but I knew they made music, but I didn't hear their music or I hadn't worked with them then. I just knew they were like really mysterious. Didn't know much about them. I'd like to see them at like my friend's flat. And then the other one I met through that one I knew. And yeah, one of my friends has been telling me for ages, you need to work with them, you need to work with them. And the time just wasn't then. And then I was going back home, back to Birmingham. Well, my home's Warsaw, but it was passing through Birmingham. My other friend was like, let's go check them in the studio. They've got a studio. So we went. And I just feel like, you know, when everything's meant to be, timing, everything happens for a reason. So I went there. We watched a film, and then I played them my songs. They loved, and I think it was the PTJ songs that I played. And then um, they played me their music, and I was just like, what the f Sorry. I was just like, what the hell? Like, oh, my gosh. I never heard anything like this. They've got their own world, and I feel like, 
they haven't released they I think they released stuff like back in the day but they haven't released how I've released so they had this energy like untouched like just they're in their bubble not affected by like how like mm, I try not to but I've got opinions I've got things I've got things that I try not to think about but it comes with when you put out music and people know who you are and stuff so they had this, like, they reminded me. Well, I feel like that working with them brought me back to my old self because they were just so just, they did what they want. And, yeah, then I was like, I'd love to, like, make an album with you guys. And there was no really, like, oh, it needs to sound like this. We just made music. We just did what we felt. Um, one would play keys, one would play guitar. It will start with drums, and then we'd just go with it. And it... There was only one time, Little Things, that I had a song before that wasn't Little Things, but when we made Little Things, it just kind of was like, oh, see you later, that song that was there. But that was the only time we were like, oh, we need a song like that, like this. Um, but not every song, the majority, but then obviously they're Broken is the Man, Backwards, Makes Sense, PCJ. And then last song is Blue Man and Jody. But we put that album all together. <laughs> well, some great music definitely came out of this move. So you mentioned one of those new songs you, you worked on that you felt like you were, you know, your younger self again is um, Broken is the Man, which is one of my favorite songs on the project. You know, can you tell me a little bit about that one? So Broken is the Man, that's one I started with PG, well, that's with PTJ. And that one I started when I met him in Jamaica, actually. Um, and, and it's kind of self-explanatory. The song, just how, like, you can be really gaslighted and to make, um, make, guess I and to be made to feel like you're the problem and you're why things are wrong when really it's the person that's saying these things to you and you don't realize especially when you're well for me I just took everything and just thought oh my god I'm the problem or I think like this and when it's actually like hold on a sec you're it's not me well it might be me sometimes but no, but that's an important moment, and that's one of my favorite parts. When we get to that moment in, in the song where you're realizing you did all of this to break me down just for me to realize mm -hmm. you weren't worth any of this and mm -hmm. worth any of my time. And that's not always easy to see in the moment, and that's why I think it's such a great song. I think even just putting that on a record, you know, I, it is very empowering. So I hope you felt that way as you were recording, recording it. Definitely. I, I'm, not, I'm not good at talking about certain songs. But I can write them, but then I can't talk about them because I've probably said everything in the song. So I find, sometimes I find it really hard to talk about things. Not if, not because they're a hard subject matter, but just because sometimes I ran out of words because I said them all, and now I don't care if that makes sense. Like some some, some songs I write because I need to write them, and then I'm like, oh my god, I feel so much better. Wow, I can't think of anything else to say anymore on that on that subject. Just certain ones, like that's one. Only because like I can't talk anymore about all the li like. If you ask me what the song is, what the song means, I'll just read you the lyrics. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But yeah, that's what that one's about. You gave us the EP a couple years ago. We're a few years removed now uh, from from the debut album. So how is Georgia feeling about putting this project out? Excited. I can't wait for. You guys, like everyone that's been listening, following, supporting me to hear this next chapter and and new people to discover it as well and then discover my old older stuff. Like, yeah. And I can't wait for people to hear the growth. Like if you've been following, if you've been listening to me from, to be fair, even from Be Right Back, but if you've listened to me from Lost and Found to Be Right Back to now, to fall offline, like I'm excited for you to have come on this journey, and maybe some songs will be. If we're all coming on this journey together, maybe some of my songs are more relatable 
because we're on it together, if that makes sense. Like, I'm just, I, I, that's why I can't wait for shows, because then I really can't wait to, like, see what songs people are screaming at, what songs people might cry at, or, like, what songs people cheer loud at. I just can't wait to see and feel what my songs are doing. That's when I'm flying, because I can see what I'm doing. <laughs> The flying, yes. I'm really, really excited for you. It's a beautiful album. You know, I'm looking forward to hearing it live. Georgia, thank you so much. You can stream her new album, Falling or Flying, on Apple Music. <laughs>